When we're organising something, like for example going on holiday, we often write a small to-do list. This needs to happen in businesses as well, but in businesses it's often far, far more complex and so we need better tools to help us. I'm going to show you with this simple holiday list how we might organise things to do it a little better. So, first of all, I've just got a Word document here and I've written out my plan as a list. This kind of works with simple projects, but there's some things that this list doesn't tell us. So, for example, if I want to decide on a destination, do I need to do that before I get my passport? Or can I get my passport first? What about my visa? Do I need to decide on the destination there? Well, yes, I do in that case. And certainly before booking flights, I want to know that I've got both my passport and my visa and the destination. So when projects get really, really complicated, such as building a new school or laying an oil pipeline or creating a DVD, all sorts of things have to happen with different people involved and we need better planning tools. A simple step up is to start to use something like a spreadsheet or a table where as well as having the list like this, you also have some notes which tell you about the plan. What you'll notice is I've put some dates into here about when these things are going to happen. In fact, if we wanted to be more precise, we could give it a start and a stop time, for example. But even then, the limitations of the spreadsheet become clear. I'm now going to show you a proper work plan, and this is something called a Gantt chart. Now, this website, Ganter, and I'll just show you the URL at top, well, actually, just Google for Ganter. That's probably easy. It's G A N T T E R. Now, in Ganter, we can put in the names of our tasks, and that's very straightforward. And there's all sorts of other fields we can fill in here. So, how long will it take? When will it start? When will it finish? And the predecessors. I'm going to show you how to do all this. So, what we're going to do is, first of all, we need to uh, decide on a destination. So I'm going to click on the little cogs just there, and I'm going to say that this is going to take me three days to decide on the destination. And then I'm going to save that. So there you see, it's extended it to three days. Now applying for a passport takes about three weeks. So I'm going to put in here three W and I'm going to save that. Now getting a visa and you'll notice it's put it in as three weeks here. Getting a visa is a bit more complicated because it might well take two weeks there we are but there's also predecessors so things that depend it depends upon in order to happen so we need to have decided on a destination and applied for our passport. Now that's what we want. We want to go from the finish to the start and perhaps I'm going to leave in there three days just to be a bit secure as a gap between having finished my passport application and starting on the visa. So now when I click save what you'll see is the Gantt chart has started to arrange itself. If I close this up a bit so we can see it better and zoom out, what we can see is that we've got this task here, deciding on destination. We can apply for our passport at the same time, but both of them are needed in order to get a visa. Now once I've got my visa, I can of course book my flights. And booking flights, well that's only going to take one day. So I'm going to click on 1D there. And of course, it does depend on these things up here. But I know that once I've got my visa, I can definitely book flights because the other things will have been done. There we are. Now packing, this is interesting because we could pack directly after we 
start uh, we've finished our getting our visa and we booked our flights but actually it might be quite a long way ahead so at the moment you'll notice all of these tasks are starting as early as possible what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the check-in date first so the check-in date I'm going to have it as uh, well that's just a one-day thing and it's definitely going to start on a particular date so I'm going to put in a deadline and I'm going to make that deadline Ooh, lost my graph off the side here <laughs> okay well I'm going to choose a particular day there and I'm just going to change the text so I'm going to say that this should be the 6th of the 6th and that's 2016 so I've now saved my check-in date but my check-in depends upon certain things. So I've got to book my flight, pack my bag, and book my taxi. So let's set up the predecessors here. So there we are. And then save. Now you see it's still putting it as early as possible. So it's trying to check me in way, way, way before the flight. So what I need to do is put a different constraint on it. So, at the moment, it says check in, and that's the deadline. But what we want is to, if we look through here, there's your predecessors. On advance, I can say, let's say it must start on the 6th, 6th, 2016, and save it. And it's going to go all the way over there. Now, booking the taxi. I can do that quite late so actually what I can do is I can change this and say well packing my bag is going to take one day there we are and I'm going to go to advance and say it should be start as late as possible there we are and then booking my taxi again is going to start as late as possible so now we can see we've got our full chart where all of these things are scheduled to happen as early as possible and then right over here I pack book the taxi go to the airport and check in that's probably enough to be playing with for the moment. I'd like you to create a Gantt chart on Ganta for your own holiday and think of all the other tasks that you have to put in here.